Hi guys. How's everybody doing? All this talent in here. Gluten tag. Um, so uh, we're going to continue unless you guys want to do something different today because I know I went over uh, uh, our balloons and our lettering. Um, I kind of combined that with last week. Um, so I want to see if there's something that you guys want to do today on a different route than that because I don't know where you are with your process right now with your foldable comic. But um, I'd like to uh, open up options um, to what you guys would want to do. Uh, it's only the art gang, Angie says. So what would you guys like to do? Do you guys want to, um, do you guys want to do some perspective today? I know that we've kind of done that in the past and it was always a, it was always a fun time because you guys followed me pretty well. Um, what would you guys want to learn? Let me know. Uh, put it in the, in the to chat if you have something that you're like, I want to know about this or I want to know about that. I mean, if it could pertain to comics, uh, I'll do my best. Do you guys have any ideas? Nathaniel, Evie? How's your comic strips coming? Are they, are they coming along really good? Are you stuck on anywhere of your process? Laura, how are you making out? Good. Tater, how you doing with your with your fold out comic? Yeah. Oh yeah, you redid yours, Evie said. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Not a problem if we had to go back a little bit. Um, why don't we do some perspective today? Because I feel like with comics, perspective is it's so much of what we do. Um, and what we create in each of these panels. So uh, let's go over some of that so you guys have a good knack on how to approach, uh, let's say one point and two point perspective, okay? So let's just, we'll do some general overviews today um, just so you have these foundational tools uh, for your comics because backgrounds and putting characters in perspective seem to be, uh, you know, something that a lot of my uh, students struggle with. So um, let's do a little bit of that today. I think it'll be it'll be fun and it'll be useful for you guys to take further into your comic strips. So let me uh, grab um, some paper here. Uh, get some loose leaf paper. You'll also need a ruler. Um, a good pencil. Drop your stuff here. Lots of paper in my studio here, guys. I wouldn't have it any other way, though. I love paper. Everybody ready for the new year? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put my camera together here. Hope everybody's got some nice paper. like Evie's on Laura's background, <laughs> just watching her there. <laughs> oh, Laura is on her own background as well, I guess. That looks funny. Uh, Liliana, how are you? Welcome. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do, get your paper. <clears throat> There we go. Uh, yeah, let's hold it horizontally. And let's just go, I'm gonna do some quick, basically, I'm gonna do some quick frames with you guys on some uh, good uh, perspectives that you might need with your comic process, okay? So follow along the best you can. And of course, uh, rewatch the video um, as you need to, as necessary. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some panels. Uh, I'm gonna make three on my page for now. So I'm just using my ruler. And making my tops. 
and then I'm going to square them off. You just want to, you just want to hand draw your squares. You can, but I think just to get the better look of a panel, you may just want to quickly do it with your ruler. Okay, so uh, the first one is the, the is the one point perspective. So I'm just going to write one point on here. Uh, now one point deals with using one point on that horizon, and we can decide whether to make that horizon line where the where the Earth meets the sky higher in the plane, if we're going to be looking down at the Earth, or we can make it lower in the plane to where we're seeing more sky right? So that's dependent on where we put that horizon in the image. Um, if we put, let's say, we divide the image in half with the horizon, we could decide whether or not we want our point to favor also one side. So let's just say we're doing a street view. We're seeing a street go off into the horizon. Uh, maybe we want to approach that with putting one point out on our horizon line, favoring our right side or our left. And that way, when we bring our ruler in and we anchor on our point, I could pull my lines out from that point. And I'm going to do that twice. And I'll quickly be able to build a road out of that one point, right? Not only that, if I wanted to put buildings on this horizon, I could present a vertical line for my height of my building, and I could begin to shoot the corners of that to my point, but only taking it so far until I wanna add another vertical line, and therefore, shoot my corner to my point again to begin my face of my building. Now, as I'm starting to do this, I'm starting to see, oh, well, this is actually two point because I still need to make this side of my box, right? Yes and no. I mean, we can flatten this side from this perspective and or we can shoot another point but but because we're in one point let's just stay in one point and make this flat on this side of the building so i don't so i know that this is perfectly parallel to our visual plane right now if i just want to put a, a quick horizon in the background i can simply silhouette what might be a tree line and or buildings could live back here, right? If I simplify those shapes, I'm going to think about where they might meet the road and maybe start again. So you could be pretty inventive with what's back there and how. I mean, you could even put a water tower out here and get inventive uh, with what you're, what's in your background, right? what's in the nature of your environment. Now, everything's gonna basically go to this point, right, in one point. So if I'm putting a car on this perspective, I'm gonna shoot the, the, the perspective lines of the car to my point as well to build up my box shape. All the features of my house are gonna to go to my point, anchoring off of that making my top line for my, let's say my door or my garage door. But basically what's making this work is these perfectly vertical lines meeting the horizontal lines that go to the point, right? But get creative guys, depth, right? This is really good depth of feel. I have a lot of foreground space here. Well, what can I put in that foreground Maybe some, maybe there's a bush we're playing over here. 
to kind of frame out my image, right? I can make a tree now on the middle plane here. And I can think about how that might frame out my drawing even more. I could consider my light source. I, I might have a sun out here and get sh a long shadow come from my objects this way. Or I can imagine my sun is overhead and I'm getting more of a shadow that is basically just below my objects, right? So now we're playing with a little bit of building of one point and an environment there and looking at foreground, midground, right? With the buildings and the background. So that might be useful to you, the one point perspective, exterior, maybe street, maybe this could be sidewalk if you guys want to make it that way. You have plenty of options with the one point, but we're favored to one side here because I put that point further away from the middle, right? But what if I went down the middle in one point? And what if I just change my horizon a little bit too? Okay, well, let's see what this does. If I bring my horizon up higher, draw my horizon line, and if I put that directly in the middle, I can now take my ruler and extend out the road, we'll call it. And now we're seeing what would be kind of downward and a little bit out yet, right? It's truly impressive that you can just casually roll out an entire landscape like nothing. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tater. Um, these are just, you know, these are just formal kind of approaches to shapes. You know, this is once you start to see how these are working, uh, that you keep making them work with whatever lines you're going to make with your perspective, right? So this is one point. And this is a little bit downwards. This is kind of looking at the character's feet, you know, or coming into a higher horizon, right? This is my horizon here. This is it here. But what changes going towards the point? Well, not much. Um, if I'm going to make, let's say, if I'm going to make this building on this, well, I'm going to build the foundation. I'm going to give it its height with my vertical line. I'm going to square off that side, right? And now I can send these corners to the point. But again, I'm only going so far. I'm not going to take it all the way to the point. I only want to make it as far as the distance I see that building being in. Okay, so different perspective, right? Now, what about my tree? Well, my tree is going to come further out. Right, I'm not going to get maybe all of the shrubs, but I'll get a little bit. Right, I'm squaring off where it meets the ground here. Now I might not be behind the tree, but I can I could think that okay, maybe we're behind a car. Let's let's think. Well, if I'm playing towards my point. I'm gonna first make my horizontal line because in one point perspective, we're gonna have a flat face, right? Especially if we're in the middle of that perspective, that one point. So I have to make my face of my car, which would be the trunk end, flat to me. And that way I can now take my corners to my point just like I did with the road, square it off. And now I have like the beginning basis of what will be my vehicle. And I'm just gonna flourish this out a little bit with what I know about cars. And mine's just a little bit of a convertible maybe. I can quickly lay out my characters in there. 
And now how do I think to get dynamic? Man, well, if I want to just show maybe this car working in its space, maybe I want to give off some nice dust clouds off of my car. Maybe it's speeding into the scene. Maybe we want to give it speed lines. Kind of offer more life to the drawing. Um, where's my horizon change with my silhouettes now? Well, I'm not going to get a lot of this now because my real estate for my sky is really gone, right? Because I'm looking down on the ground more than looking up in the sky. So as you can see, your silhouette, maybe it's got some coverage back here. Maybe it's now getting tucked behind the other features here that are in your midground. But we're just seeing less sky. Right. So downward. Downward too also it just as our uh, our psychological look and feel feels with this. When you're looking down on characters, it's very imposing. It's almost like the characters are a little bit more vulnerable than they would normally be, right? In a let's say an upward perspective. Well, let's look at an upward perspective. What what does that do? Well, if I change the horizon now really low and I make it low on my panel and I make my point in the center here, what I have to work with are lines that now can be projected outward, right? And high. So what they say with you wanna make a car really moving, well, Put the, put, take the wheels off the ground and make the car basically come off the ground. So what if, let's just pretend this car has launched and now is coming over us and is gonna end up being on this road again, because this is my road line, right? Essentially, or my horizon. So what would that look like? Well, I draw the back end like we did before on the downward view. Again, I'm just simplifying these shapes into a box form and I'm going towards my point, but only so far. And you guys can do this with superheroes too in a one point downward or at least upward perspective, right? Because it's quite heroic now. That's what happens with this view. Now, as I was saying, I kind of want to be underneath the car right now. It's going to be flying over us. So what do I need to do to indicate? Well, I need some wheels. And again, I'm just simplifying this for now. I don't need to get too technical in my detail. I just want to get my general shape relationship here going. And if it helps, you know, you could start to put the undercarriage together. You guys know what some of that looks like. Or of course you can look it up online. You're gonna see the muffler and the axles. But this is kind of cool because, you know, this is a viewpoint that we don't get to typically see. Like, cause not all of us are, you know, repair mechanics that can see these viewpoints. So that's what's kind of cool about perspective and using it is that you're gonna give your viewer a look of something they may maybe never have seen. And that's kind of awesome. Cause you could you know, surprise them with what kind of dynamics that you wanna use. <laughs> There's my car floating out. Now, you know, whether this is the front end or the back end, it's up to you. I think they're both can be pretty dynamic, um, but you can always send like we did here with motion lines to give us an idea of which direction it's coming in. I think with this one, I, it kind of looks cooler if it's coming at us with what I'm doing right now. So what I'm gonna do is give my some speed lines over this horizon and maybe we have a little bit of a cloud going on from where we came. And I want to think about shadow too. Why not place the shadow form 
underneath, right, the object. So that's kind of, yeah, and it's flying because it's hit, it's hitting this, you know, this road and it's launched, right? This is comics, guys. We could take it to these fun places. So get inventive um, with what you see with one point. So one point downward, one point upward, and then one point favoring a side, right? Favor and I could have sent this to the left side and had a different image. Well, let's go to two point real quick. Yeah, so this is, these are fun little quick modes. I'm gonna make three more now. I'm trying to make them as equal as possible. Should I make this one? And Close them off. All right, well, how about two-point perspective? How often are you gonna need that? Well, let's see. Two-point with a horizon line in the middle is gonna give me a point on both sides, right? Each horizon line now is gonna have points on either side. Now, do I have to go to the edge on them? No. Can these, can, can these points be further out and out of my drawing? Certainly. But for now, just to keep us with inside our, our frame, I'm going to keep us right in here in this world. Now, typically for two point, you really need to start with an edge of your object. So a corner is, a, is an idea. Um, or an approach that you can have to this. So let's just say I'm building a building in perspective. Well, if I start with the corner line and give enough information about where this lies on the ground to where it is in the sky, I can now send my corners both to both points. Essentially, I'm building kind of like a kite kind of look right now, but I'm only pulling my lines so far to my points. Therefore, I can add another vertical line and get a face, right? Point it to it. Point to it. Oops. Now, where can I go from here? Well, what if what if I'm inside and I just want to show how a part of this wall maybe in my inside of my house is coming out like this? What do I do from here? How do I build this out? Well, look at your corners from here on these two sides, right? What you're going to tend to do is you're going to shoot from those corners to one of your points to make the remaining walls. So for instance, I come off of, I lined up my ruler, but now I'm gonna be able to get my line off of this opposite point for this corner. I'm gonna do that the same way here. And then I can do that also with this point on this opposite end of corners. Ah, now I have like an actual room going on now, don't I? Precision eraser. Go in and erase some of this. I'm going to keep my points there because I'm going to need those. And you guys can make them really light if you guys want to because chances are you're going to erase them. Now, how do I keep making this look like more like a home? Well, I can add more objects into making it look like a house. How? 
well, let's add, let's add some foreground elements here. Maybe let's get some dynamic things going on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play off the points for all of our faces. So here I go, I'm gonna anchor off of this point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a shelf in perspective alongside of this hallway. This is gonna be the hallway in my house. Going off of my point, I'm gonna make the edge of that first face. Now, I know it's a box form, so I have to shoot down from the corners and make straight vertical lines. Now, having that face, I know I have to send this corner and this corner to this point, but only so far, right? So if I work off of that point, I go to this corner and I pull it out. I'm gonna do that again on this one and I pull it out. Now, how do I close off this and make this look right in perspective? Well, I have to go off of this anchor point for this line, which helps me close it off. Now, it doesn't look like much right now, it looks like a box, right? But what if I add an object we're familiar with. And notice, I put on, I make a circular form on my tabletop, because what I'm gonna make here is I'm gonna put a lamp in our foreground here. And I don't care how high I get, or how it's gonna cover up some of my perspective, but I'm gonna put it in there like so and erase some of the information I have behind it. Now what's gonna help really show that this is a desk or a side cabinet where we're gonna add different flair of detail Right, I would suggest you guys look up the furniture, but you're gonna you build off it with the existing information you have, right? Now I know those other legs are basically being hidden behind my my tabletop here just because of the perspective they're in. But I also can see that I might see a little foot underneath my table in this perspective. So be pretty keen on when you build your blocks and your shapes that you're understanding where those legs would be and make the best assumption onto what you can see, especially if something's being foreshortened and or covered by your perspective shortening. Okay, so make sure you're building that and just keep a keen aware of what you still might see, right? Um, how about a door? Well, Maybe there's a door here on my, this is my front door, let's say. Well, I gotta build that off of my, my other point here, just like I did with that wall, because it's gonna follow a little bit of the contours of that wall. I make my top line with my point, and then I know I need to add two vertical lines. Ah, there's my nice front door. Now I'm getting even more of a sense of my perspective, right? Because I know how big a door is and I know how big these objects are to be able to get a sense of my scale between the two, right? Starting to see that. Now what's really gonna show the sense of scale? A person, right? And because of the way this is working, if I do put a person, let's say in our mid ground here, I'm gonna assume that a lot of my person's head is going to be up towards the ceiling in this kind of shot, right? It's allowing me to see my now my sense of scale towards my object. Now, if I can put my figure form in view here, now I'm getting a sense of even more scale, right? Because it really takes a figure form 
to be in the, the drawing to really give us a sense of perspective and scale. But it's also just good perspective that does it, right? So two point in a house. What else am I missing? Maybe we have a doorway on this wall. I can shoot my ruler into that. Follow the contour on the wall. Parallel. And then two verticals. Now what helps give this depth, and I might have shown some of you that, this before, is giving an inlay to the door. Well, I go to my point, I work with the inside, but what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna see it on this close side to us, right? Because the perspective is shooting in. So we're just getting that kind of viewpoint of the door that way, but it makes it definitely more realistic that it's there. And if maybe if it's not an actual door and just a doorway, you might wanna erase your doorway bottom line. Now here's what's going on too, guys. Now we're starting to see into this next room. How do I know where the wall line is on that next room? Well, I have two lines here that need to come together, right, on that far room. So if I just take my ruler and follow those existing lines, I'm gonna see where they cross. Because where they cross is where it's gonna be the corner line of that room. And not only that, the height I'm gonna get from those converging lines as well. So this is like a good way to get some life out of a house or, you know, or, or an interior that you just don't wanna draw a flat wall, let's just say. You wanna give it some depth. Well, use two point, because then you can build the walls out and build all of the uh, space and be a little interior designer for that kind of drawing. So that's two point interior. Let's do a two point exterior. And if I change my, let's change my POV again, or my, my uh, horizon again. Maybe I won't go all the way now. I'm gonna come down kind of low. Put my horizon in, put my two points. I know I need a center line, but maybe I don't wanna cut it right in half, right? And send lines both ways. Maybe I wanna just favor one side again. So I'm gonna to go to this side again. Make my line. I'm gonna shoot my corners as far as I wanna go. Shoot my corners again. Anybody have an idea what, what kind of object you want to make out of this? For exterior. Well, it could be a building, right? Another car, Nathaniel says. Yeah, we could we could do a car in this this POV. I think my shapes are a little too, I think I've gotten a little too high if I want to make this a car. I think I need to make it a little longer too, but let's do it. Let me just extend this out a little bit. I'm going to make my vertical line. I know where my corner is here. Okay, that's it. That's interesting. <laughs> Cars and houses. Me, some smoke breathing monster taking out a guy. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we could do that too. Um, 
yeah, I'm just trying to show you guys how we just register this in shapes, right? Um, but yeah, let's think about this as a uh, as a car, let's say, or let's do let's do a spaceship. Let's let's get let's get interesting. <laughs> Um, if I have a general shape going, maybe I just want to make this a unique kind of spaceship. Well, what if I stack my blocks on my spaceship, right? I, I add another corner line like my existing one. And I send my lines to my points. And now I make my vertical lines bringing that box down. And now we have more of a unique shape. Um, and let's just say I want to add another on this back end here. I'm going to add two vertical lines. And like we did with the corners, I'm going to go towards my point again. And I'll do that here. And send my down line down vertical. Okay, now I have something kind of cool going. What if I just want to change the shape of this though and get it out of a square? What do I do? Well, what I would do is I would use your existing lines to give you an idea of how that shape needs to stay in that perspective. So form the lines to the existing shape, right? So I'm curving those lines. And then what I'm doing is potentially, especially if I'm shedding some of the shape, after I'm starting to reshape, I'm going to see, oh, I still have to make these lines converge towards my point. It's just that now I'm having some excess come off of that shape, right? So I'm curving it out now. So I would still work off of my point to find now where my curvature edge is meeting my other curving edge. You know what this might be? Maybe this is a submarine, guys. That could be cool. Let's make this a submarine. Um, it may not look like your typical one, but <laughs> that's cartooning, right? Okay, so I have this face here. Maybe I want to put a circular window on this face. Maybe this is the front of my submarine. So I stay anchored on my point, right? Just like I make those existing lines. And I make my top line in the inside of this. And now I can kind of give it some language and I can make my bottom line of my window go towards my point still. If I want to put um, maybe some windows on the side, I'm going to follow my point and putting in my horizontal lines making them completely vertical. And let's just say I want to make them those circular windows, you know? What if I would put my circle within that existing square to give me that proper perspective. Now again, I, what if I just want to get away from this blocky look? Well, you can always go in now and curvature the form because it's still in perspective. I'm just changing the edges. So it's a lot about what you're cutting away, right? We're taking away from the drawing. This could be a bulldozer. <laughs> this could be so many things um, until we put it in that environment, right? So 
just going to give mine a little bit more flair. Maybe it's got a, I don't know, some kind of design lines on it. Um, hmm. Maybe we can see the bolts. Maybe mine's made it, you know, steel or something. Maybe we can see some of the, the detail of how it's put together. Yeah, maybe it's an underwater tank. That'd be cool. I like that. All right. Well, I have my horizon line, right? So I know where my ground should tend to be. And we know when we're in, when we're kind of in an oceanic environment, we get a lot of cool silhouetted plants and creatures. So get inventive on, again, just like we did with our simplified background environment. Think about how do you simplify the background environment of the oceanic floor, right? What could be put in there? Well, schools of fish could be moving around in there. It's just like a war between fish and cats and the fish are weaponized, yes. Think about the floor, what, what, what could be coming up into view in the foreground that can really frame some of where we are. Do we need to see a fish in the foreground swimming? Maybe a little bit of bubbles coming off. Now, some people tend to put just bubbles in a water environment just to give it that complete vibe that it's in underwater. So it's kind of like, an, maybe it's an underwater steamroller <laughs> or, or exploration uh, uh, device. Some people like to give their, uh, especially if they're in a perspective as though we're underwater, some people like to actually draw the water overhead. Um, you know, typical styles of that are kind of drawing the waves, you know, that might be on the top of this image. And those might dissipate, you know, into nothingness, right? Because we're just, we're just kind of seeing into this environment. I don't know, what else might you want to put in there? It's up to you guys. Maybe there's a big, maybe there's a big serpent just swimming in the background silhouette back here. I'm gonna black it, black out this. Maybe it's the Loch Ness, or maybe it's what's really what this oceanic adventure is looking for. So again, two point right. Two point, two point. Okay, so let's see. How about two point low perspective, right? Looking down, or high perspective, looking down. So change my horizon high up on the page or up on the image. Now I have two points. Again, I think it's it's much nicer to approach it with favoring one side, but it's up to you guys. You want to do it right in the right in the middle and see what kind of results you get. Try it out. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to tailor to this side this time with my corner line. And if I shoot that towards my points. What can we make of this? Ooh, interesting, okay. What can we make of this? Well, um, we can do a downward view. Let's just say maybe our characters are walking a sidewalk beside a building. That could be a cool view. 
uh, let's do that. It's kind of simple and might be something you guys might need to draw. Well, set the horizon high, put two points in. This is beginning of our building. Beside our building is gonna be a sidewalk. So I'm gonna anchor off my point, bring out my sidewalk line. And I'm gonna do that here as well. Now sidewalks have a little bit of a lip, so I'm gonna add that, especially to this side, because we'd see a little bit of that lip. And let's just say this building, we're gonna add another vertical to it. We have to, just to see where it ends. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow my contour of my perfect vertical and add a perfect vertical there and one there. That way, when I cross these lines, going to the opposite points, now I have my building. Just gotta get rid of some of my excess lines. Now what if you say, oh, this is, this is a part of a building that's with other buildings. Well, what do we do? Well, to keep building off of what's back here, we're gonna keep adding this corner line. Now, notice how my shape comes to a point here. Well, I wanna think about the faces of these buildings coming together, kind of like a little cityscape, which is going on here. So if I add a vertical line here, and it comes out of the frame. I can do that again. And I may not be on the exact same vertical line as the other building, but at least I can imagine, and if you bring your, just come out of the plane a little bit, just so you can see the building. I'm gonna send that corner down, but I'm only gonna go so far, right? Because again, I'm adding, the perspective coming off of the point. And now I'm building a little bit of a cityscape here, right? We're seeing two buildings. Now what if I want one in this corner too? Well, build that vertical line up, send it to both points, but only so far, right? Add the ver vertical lines in, in the perspective they're in. And now I can now take this corner to this point and this corner to the opposite point. So if we're seeing this as Batman and, you know, a, maybe a Batman story and Batman's waiting for uh, Commissioner Gordon on the rooftop. This could be a really cool look because we can put, you know, Batman waiting up here in a perspective. Right? It's once we put that scale of the person in, then we're really starting to see what's going on, right? And once we start putting in the details of our shapes, noting where our doors are and our windows are and our garage, everything that can give us an idea of this being what we want it to be. We could start to see, oh, wow. Well, now we have a really cool low perspective. Maybe this Batman character is waiting for this car that's about to pull up. Well, I make my box shape of my car. I know we're in this point perspective from this side. So I'm just gonna send my lines to that point. Build my car. Maybe it's nighttime, so I wanna make maybe a cool indication of that with the, the lights of my vehicle. 
I'm going to build off of that existing shape to get the features. What do you guys think? Two point downward. If I put my, you guys can get inventive with your sidewalk. What am I having out in my horizon, right? Well, I could simplify the horizon with more cityscape. I'm putting buildings in back here. Maybe I want to blacken them out. So we're looking for that depth, right, guys? Depth of field. Depth of field. That's what gives us the idea of being able to see what we're looking at and the way that a camera or our, or our actual eyes would get to see that, right? What about, so what about foreground objects in this view? Well, where my mind goes is two things. I, we can either put a tree, it may be really tall in this foreground, kind of like we did with a foreground bush, right? Um, you can think about a, a telephone pole, maybe that's squeezing in view. Because once you put one of these in, you can think about how that might play into direction and getting our focus on something. But think about your cables. You know, this stuff can kind of end up framing cool objects. Um, when you have framing within frames, it tends to make our eyes look a little bit differently at that same object. So. Uh, Think about those kind of foreground objects. You could do like some birds maybe that are flying near the edges. Sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. That'd be really cool, getting a bird. Now, I could make that bird in, uh, pretty big in scale, couldn't I, right? Because if it's closer to us than it is our character maybe here, we could put that into scale. in a bigger way. I'm just gonna silhouette it out with some fill, but get inventive, guys. So that's that's another that's two that's two point perspective downward. All right, we got about five minutes left. Can I see uh, some examples, see, see what you guys have done? I hope these are gonna be helpful to you. I'm, I'm sure they would and will be. Um, it's just depending on how you're gonna use them, right? Anybody have anything they can share with this? Nathaniel, you have a good uh, perspective you can show me? Did you, did you, try, did you try one of these perspectives? Yeah. Let's see what you got. Great. Great, Nathaniel, these are really good. Man, you're good, you got it, you got it down. Nathaniel, do you think you would challenge yourself with something like this? I have no idea from the limitations of the box. There is no limitations to the box, is there? Once you once you find once you find out how to make it, it's gonna be it's gonna open up so much to you guys, especially if you want to do comics and animation. It very much matters. Um, anyone else can share? Tater, do you have some? Yeah, what do you have, Tater? 
It was the thing that I was working on. It, you can't really see the perspective part of it very well since I sketched it pretty lightly, but it is there. I see the I see your point there up in the up in the left. Yeah. Is it scaling like a a, a wall or a street? Oh uh, no, it's just kind of like slanted ground. So slanted I, ground. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted to make it look kind of like off center. Like. Oh, so you're doing what's called a Dutch angle. Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So quickly, you know, it, the thought of the Dutch angle, guys, is instead of having a flat straight horizon you're going to change that horizon to a dip right i think in tater tot's case i think you're dipped the opposite way sorry just real quick i think you're dipping this way if i'm not mistaken tater you put your one point in you favored you're not in the middle and then you brought your horizon line out like your road, right? And now, basically, if you want to see it pretty clear, is build that box. Send the lines to the box to the to the point, right? And I think you would have then if you're having it scale in a three quarter fashion you might have more hind on that tater than you would uh, head, right? To get that scale and, the, and to get the scaling. See how I did that, you guys? So going Dutch, just be very, um, uh, be, be very conscious with how you use it because um, the, the, the tended nature of dutching an image is giving an awkwardness and an uneasiness to what's going on in the image. Um, so this is what you'll see in a lot of scaling uh, uh, pictures, right? When a person is coming up a ladder, let's say, right, on a wall. Well, look how much une it makes us feel uneasy because... We know this character scaling upwards and we're seeing it in Dutch form. So we're really just getting uneasy on how this character might stay on that plane, right? So it's definitely a uh, psychological use, the Dutch angle. <laughs> yeah, it's a dog <laughs> scaling the wall <laughs> or a cat on a ladder. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, but yes, think about how that's used. The Dutch, the Dutch, you can use Dutch on all of these that I've done. It's just going to make you feel a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, absolutely consider it. Uh, Liliana, was this helpful? Or were these, were these little demos helpful? Can I share a drawing not related to class though? Sure, Laura. Yeah. What do you have? Um, I gotta share my screen too because it's on this. But uh, yeah. Okay. Could could Scott give you that permission? I hope. That's really weird. Just, just, just yeah, I think she can already. Okay. Give it a shot, Laura. Okay. We'll see if it works. There it is. Oh, that's great. Oh, fantastic. What's the name of this character? Um, this is Vernon. She is one of my older characters that I recently redesigned. So, yeah. Love it. I love it. And the, and the way that the hair is working there and overlapping <laughs> the eyes. Really good. Do, do you have any questions for me on any of that? The one thing I can see, Laura, and Scott, if you share my video, just be just be um, conscious of how your clothing fits around your character, Laura, because these merging lines and the way that your clothing wraps around 
your existing character is really going to make that look real and accurate. So be very conscious of how your, your clothing fits on your character. Make sure you have a little bit of, of wrapping that's going on on your character lines because those are going to give you those little details are going to give you a nice sense of depth and really how this drapery is feeling on your character. Okay. So just be conscious of that, that you're really wrapping that line work around the body. That's the only thing I could see from what you have there. Your line weight looks really good and your color looks really good too. So keep going. Anybody else want to share something? Why no? yes, young Pylon. Evie, how'd you do? Did you get some of these sketches down a little bit? Were they helpful? Yeah, they were helpful. Okay, good, great. All right, guys. So this was a good. That's all right if you're a bit behind. You know, you know, again, guys, go back to these videos, all right? Follow me slower. Pause me and, and come back and, and, and try to work some of these out. Um, yeah. And Tater's saying, I recommend looking up tutorials and reference images for clothes as well. Absolutely. Yes. Drapery on clothes is, is very... Um, uh, it's, you know, it's quite a study. It's a study and a study for sure, especially with form and figure and shadow. All right, guys. That was our workshop today. I hope you can apply them to your comics and that your holidays are amazing. Um, Happy New Year. We're in a whole new year, and I hope to see you guys again in the new year. Whoops. Have a great new year, and, it was, and it's been awesome to get to know you all and draw with you guys. It's been so cool. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, Evie. Bye. Bye Thanks, Scott. everyone. Bye. Happy Daniel. New Thank Year. You. Bye. Bye, Scott. Bye, Liliana. Bye. Happy New Bye. Year.